Well, hello, friends. Today we are going to implement the pledge syscall, which is a neat idea from the OpenBSD project. And the purpose of pledge is to limit everything that you can do from that point on in the calling process. So basically, um, you want to if you're using pledge, then you want to structure your program so that you initialize everything you need to initialize, and then you tell the kernel from now on. I'm only going to be doing this limited set of things. And if I do anything other than what I said I would, then I'm misbehaving so you can kill me. Um, that's basically in the simplest terms what it is. So the API that they have in OpenBSD is, is super duper simple and, and looks really good. So I think we should, we should do something very similar. And let me just show you how we would use it. I guess we can um, use it in ping, for example, which is a good example of something that can use pledge because it, or actually, let me show you something even simpler. Let's do the cat program. So the cat program only needs to do um, two things. It needs to uh, open a file and then read from that file. And for that, we would pledge that we're only going to do, um, do standard input and output, and uh, we're only going to do read-only um, file system operations. And of course, if that fails, then we'll say that did not work out. And I think you could even, um, after you've performed the open, you could even uh, pledge your way down further um, to STDIO because after that point, we don't need to open any files anymore. So something like this. And the beauty of this is that we have just communicated to the kernel that uh, if I do anything other than um, these two things, then kill me because I'm misbehaving. And um, this allows something like uh, programs that um, are parsing like foreign data or talk to like hosts on the network or something. It allows you to, to like drastically limit the amount of system calls that they can do and the amount of damage that they could cause to the system if they were somehow compromised by the foreign data or by the um, remote system. Or, or you know, if, if something goes wrong in some way, then we can trap it so much earlier this way. Um, and of course, so an example of, of something that might go wrong here is like, imagine that you had a call to, I don't know, socket or something like that. You tried to open the socket, um, then your program would crash here because you never said that you wanted to open um, IPv4 sockets. So anyway, this is the basic idea. And then uh, and something more complex like ping, uh, it uses more stuff, right? So we want to pledge a bigger set of things. Um, and uh, by the way, you can only ever remove things from your pledge. You can never add things to it. So um, we would start out here with something like stdio, uh, and we need to do um, a set UID call. We're doing it right here because once we open a raw socket, then we um, don't need to be root anymore. So, but for in the beginning, we need it. So we say ID and also inet so that we can open inet sockets. And yeah. So it would be something like that. And then if that fails, then we will pair. And then the cool thing here is that once we have done the set UID and drop privileges, we can say, OK, fine. I'm never going to do any of the ID related stuff from this point. Uh, and we can reduce our uh, pledge promise. So now if you were to try to call set UID after this point, it would be a crash. So. Oh shit, yeah, and it's supposed to have a second parameter actually, uh, which is the, so this is called the promises that you make to the kernel. And then you also have a set of exec promises, which are promises that um, are inherited by, or not inherited strictly, but like if you exec so that you, you replace the program executable with something else, then uh, it switches over to the exec promises. And at least that's how the, the OpenBSD API looked like. Now, I've never actually used this on OpenBSD, but I've read the man page, so I'm going to implement this 
based on my understanding of the man page about pledge. Um, so let me just go and update the thing here. Okay. And I guess we can bring up the man page also. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, the pledge. Restrict system operations, indeed. <clears throat> so yeah, this is the API. It takes a constjar promises and constjar exec promises. And it's just a space separated list of these promises that we were making. And then you can find a list of them here. So the promises argument is a string. Um, and here is a whole bunch of the different promises that you can make. So we were using ID, for example, which they say here allows the following system calls, which can change the rights of a process, and so on. So <laughs> let's let's do a first cut of implementing this and see how it would look like. Um, I guess we'll start by just adding a syscall wrapper for it. Promises and exec promises. Oh, this is so tiny. That's so large. That's just about right. Um, okay, and then we'll say uh, we're going to need to put this in a struct. So we'll say pledge params. Um, Pledge params, and it's going to be a string with promises. And if promises is not null, then we pass the length of promises, otherwise that, and then we do the same. Okay, and then. Okay, now let's define that struct. So this would be a struct sc pledge params, string argument promises, string argument exec promises. And the API, by the way, um, if you don't, if you pass null for either of these, then it just leaves it as it was. Um, it, so it's if you want to update just one of them, you can pass null for the other, and it's, uh, it doesn't touch that one. Okay. And oh yeah, and we, of course we have to add pledge to the syscall list. Pledge. All right. Now let's go and define some of these. So I guess we can do an uh, enum class pledge. Maybe we'll do it as um, um well let's let's just do them as numbers. So let's see. Start with, let's just start with the ones that we were using. So, so SDKIO, INET, and ID, and our path. Um, maybe we should do this with a um, enumerate macro. Um, something like this. SDKIO, our path inet and id. We'll just start with those. And then we'll say here um, Okay, and then we can do something. Well, yeah, that's fine. And then, so we want to store this per process. I'm thinking we'll store it in a bit mask because at least we're not going to have more than 32 um, 
promise types in the near future. So we can call this promises um, and the exact promises as well. And then process can have a uh, maybe bool has promises, something like that. Um, so if promises is non-zero, then we have promises. And maybe we can look up an individual promise as well. So has promise has promised. Um, has promised or has promise. Has promised sounds pretty nice. So um, promises and IU U32 pledge, something like that. And has exec promised. Although the exec promise is not actually super interesting to look up. Um, because that one, we just want to copy that over to promises when we exec. So this one is the interesting one. Mm. Okay. And then let's add a entry point for the pledge syscall. Pledge params. Um, okay, so I think we are good to go with that. I'll just put it here at the bottom. Maximize this. Plop. Wait, I'm trying to make it bigger. Ah, there we go. And of course, the first thing we gotta do is very carefully copy out the parameters from the user space object because this is on the user space stack right now. So we got to be careful not to leave it on there for too long. Uh, but first we'll check if we can actually read from it. Uh, validate read typed, which just uses templates to check the right size. Okay, so if we can't read the param structure, then we'll just say default. Otherwise, let's just make a copy of it on our own stack here. Don't have to worry after that point about reading from it. So copy from user space, params, user params. All right. Now, um, I guess we want to um, parse the, um, the strings. So if we have a promises string, that's not null, then let's see, because null was allowed, so let's see, promises, um, and copy, validate and copy string from user, right? Um, like that. And if that fails, we will return bad address. Okay. And we will do the same for exact promises. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Okay. So now we have two strings, which may or may not be null. Um, so I guess uh, we gotta look at if promises is no. I don't know if it's not null. Then um, new promises, and we'll do something like um, parse um, parse pledge. Um, Promises and we'll put them into the new promises. And then if parsing fails, we'll say Ian Val. And then let's see how is this going to work. Um, call it maybe a spec or a pledge spec. Um, 
Okay, and maybe I'm kind of thinking we should reject overly long strings. Um, promises length is greater than times. I don't know why, I just feel like I want to reject these right now, so we'll just reject them. Um, maybe we can say e too big. Argument list too long. That's pretty good too. Um, okay, so we'll split the um, spec into parts, just split by space. Then we'll just iterate over the parts. Actually, we can split it into string views rather than strings, and we don't use any heap space. Okay, and then we just have to iterate. And then I guess we want to do something like, like if part equals stdio, then mask. Um, pledge studio continue something like that. So let's do that with a macro. Enumerate pledge promise. That's done. Oh, right. Um, so it's if part equal uh, x, then mask pledge x continue. Oh, wow. That's Bit of a mouthful, but that's okay. And otherwise, return false if we encounter something that we don't recognize. There we go. Okay. That's pretty good. And then if it does succeed, we have to check that um, they have an error code. Eperm. If you're trying to increase your permissions, we shouldn't allow that. So basically, you shouldn't be allowed to try to add anything to the pledge mask. Um, to the new, any new promises. So if um, new promises and um, m promises. Basically, if any bit is set in new promises that's not set in the existing promises. If we have promises and the new promises are trying to set some bit, then that, otherwise, m promises new promises. I think we can do the same for exec promises. It's pretty repetitive, but okay. All right. Um, wait, am I doing this right? So if I've only promised bit one, then we will test if the new promise mask and everything except bit one, which would be an attempt to add a new promise instead of take one away. Okay, I think we're good with that. So then what are we gonna do with this? Now we have the promises. Presumably, 
then in like sys, uh, we can look at the um, let's look at the cat program. What sys calls he's gonna do? So he's gonna do open, and then he will do some writing inside fprintf, and he's gonna do some malloc and stuff in fd's append. So I guess we need. I mean, it's like this basic, basically this set here. So the way that that I figure is that um, stdio is it's like there's a lot of stuff in there. It lets you do malloc, uh, printf, and um, all the basic stuff. Like you can create pipes, you can go to sleep, a standard console command line program set of syscalls. So we're just gonna um, allow, and I can tell here right away that like we're gonna need a bunch of things that I didn't actually consider, like um, like how this will malloc because we're appending to a vector and that will use like, mmap, mmunmap, um, madvice, mprotect, all kinds of things. So maybe we can just start at the top sys dollar set mmap name so we'll do something here like if we have promises and because if we don't have any promises made in a program we'll just leave it alone and let it go about its business so pledge is only going to affect programs who have actively pledged something and then it becomes like a task of using this everywhere um, so if we have promised something in this program that we are that's calling set mmap name right now then um, and if we has if we haven't promised that we're gonna um, stdio then we should crash basically um, so that would be Crash. Wait, how do they crash? A process which attempts a restricted operation is killed with an uncatchable SIG abort. So let's do that. Um, so we we'll SIG abort. And we don't have an particular EIP address for this crash, so we'll just say zero. Um, we should print a little message here saying that um, um, violating uh, pledge um, has not Pledged STIO or something like that. And we shouldn't ever return from yeah, we can't can't return from crash. So we'll just I was thinking we could assert not reached. Um let's just start a build. <laughs> Might take some time anyway. Um, do I like this? And then, of course, we'll have to use this in more places. So I'll just put the same thing in mmap and in mmunmap because I think all of these guys are part of the SDIO package. If you look for this mmunmap, mmap, and protect, blah, 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 blah. This is quite a lot of stuff to put into all of these functions, though. Maybe let's do a macro for it. Um, make a require check pledge, maybe. Um, promise, and we'll do something like. Um, If has promises and 
has not promised pledge this promise, then I mean we'll just do this right here basically. Um, and oh, almost there. And then this should instead be like um, that. So if we have some promises, but you haven't promised this particular one that we're checking, oopsie doopsie, then we don't like you. So say check pledge, stdio. Check pledge. How about um, Required promise. Um, mm, require and force. Keep promise. Um, I don't know. Um, require promise. It's kind of good, actually, because it's like it requires that. I mean, really, it's like if you have promised anything, then we require that this is one of the promises. Um, but like, require promise if you have made any promises. That's a bit on the long side. Require promise, I think, is good enough, and we'll know what that is. So, um, yeah. Okay, so let's try to apply that. Maybe we'll put this at the um, top of the file, actually, somewhere here. Sys. Why are you expecting a while and a do while loop? What did I forget? I forgot to say while here. Okay. Um, wait, is, why does it still say that? I am confused. Also, why is my computer so incredibly slow lately? Um, oh shit! I see why. I'm forgetting to do a extra curly. Or um, H top. <laughs> I was getting uh, getting dissed on IRC for not using H top instead of top. Um, wow, look at all those OBS threads. Holy moly. Anyway, um, so let's see. Sys. We'll just put this in a few more syscalls then. Oh, we built. Um, a map. I guess we can just. These are like conveniently next to each other anyway, but we're gonna have to go through all the syscalls and annotate all the different situations. Purge, mm, I don't know. I guess there are gonna be some that I don't really know what to do with. But the first thing we do is a super user check anyway. Get host name. Get host name. Uh, it's not part of any list. A small set of read-only operations are allowed. This is an exception that they make for the syscodal. That seems very um, OpenBSC specific. Get host name. Well, you know, in spirit, it seems kind of like an STDIO thing, because you should be allowed to ask what the name of the machine that you're on is. It doesn't strike me as particularly offensive. Fork. Where's fork? Proc. OK. 
category allows the following process relationship operations. Uh, we don't have that, but we can add it. Proc. Oh, not procfs. We should add a few more of these, I guess. Proc, exec. Um, it's pretty easy to add them. We we'll just have to do this. So, proc, exec. Uh, I don't know. What else is this cool one? Um, f atter can change file attributes. Nah, we don't have to, to do all of them at the moment. So, proc and exec though. This is fork. Uh, and then we also have the exec syscall coming up here. Wow, this file is kind of big. The exec ve syscall require prompts exec. Um, okay, and let's look at those ID ones that we had. So like set UID, that's um, require promise. That's going to be, in, you have to have the ID promise. Set GID likewise. So I'll just look at the list here. Set UID is set EUID. Do we even have set EUID? I think maybe we don't. Uh, we have set groups. So we can put that there. And what's get priority? Scheduling priority. Oh, interesting. Consider that part of the ID family and the proc family. Oh, it seems like some syscalls are part of multiple categories. That's kind of interesting. So I think I've listened to um, Theo from OpenBSC talk about Pledge a bit, and my understanding is that he sort of views these as um, subsets of the POSIX functionality so that you are telling the kernel which subsets um, of POSIX or like the Unix operating system basically that you want to be, that you're going to be using in this program. So hence the this interesting categories. Uh, but I mean I'm just going to trust that they've developed a pretty good set of categories because my understanding is that this pattern has been applied basically throughout the OpenBSD um, user land set of utilities. So it's probably pretty reasonable. Um, anyways, let's just see if if we can make this run as is. And that should probably be a little nicer to the CPU. So let's look at HTOP. So now I'm curious. Oh, this poor machine. Very, very busy machine. Hmm. I'm definitely looking forward to um, to someday being <clears throat> being in a place where I feel like I can buy a computer. <laughs> it's gonna be gonna be a very relieving purchase when I get there. Um, so let's make sure we have everything else compiled. Seems like we didn't. Hmm. <clears throat> I had prepared two cups of tea, so no problem. I wonder if I'm making some really dumb mistake here. It's definitely more intricate um, than this, though. Like, it's not just a matter of like checking at the start of every syscall, um, because some of these are like. Um, you can do these syscalls as long as what you do is read-only. And then this one, the W path is like, you can do these syscalls, most of the same as R path, except now you can also do write. Um, you can write to the file system if you have W path. So 
um, we need to like we need to go into the syscall and sort of check what it is that you're doing by calling it. And of course, we're definitely not going to be able to implement all of these things in one video, but we can do some of them, and it'll be interesting. Okay, so now we have booted, and everything is not crashing by default, which is uh, good. So um, let's try to cat something. Well, that worked. Uh, well, I don't know why it shouldn't. Ping. Crashed. Oh, shit. OK. Ping has not pledged ID, it says. So we're crashing in setgid. Uh, I thought I pledged ID. Um, we have setgit right here. And we definitely pledged ID already up here. So maybe, I mean, we're able to, or I don't want to say too much. Uh, I was going to say we're able to print, but it seems like maybe we didn't. But why have we not pledged ID? Maybe the parsing thing didn't go right. Um, pledge. Um, M promises is new promises. Okay, let's just uh, announce what we are parsing then. So, parsing uh, pledge promise. Maybe I'm just um, totally messing this up somehow. Parsing flash promise ID. Okay. Um. Then M promises is no promises, so I guess we can see here. Setting M promises. Uh, we'll just I'm just doing this so that we get it as hexadecimal. <laughs> it's not a pointer. I'm just casting it to Voidstar, because then I know that the um, output code will. Other than the um, logging code, we'll print it in hex. Um, and promises zero. Well, oh, duh, because, because, because. Because I had not assigned to and promises yet. Hmm. Maybe this is something stupider than I realize. Okay, so M promises is three and what um what is that? Uh, uh STDIO. That would be like bit one, that would be bit two. I would expect that to be bit... Wait, am I doing this stupidly somewhere? Oh shit, I'm, I'm just oaring or them together without turning them into bit masks. Um, right, that's what I'm screwing up. Uh, da, 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 da. Yes, I am not creating a bit mask. Well, that's easy to fix. There we go. Okay. Mm. 
Okay, um, can we ping something more interesting? All right, so what happens if we unpledge STDIO at that point? So after we have drop privileges and normally we want to be able to print, but what if we like lose that ability? Then let's just see that it actually crashes ping. Pingo.com. Crash has not pledged STDIO. It's very good. We're crashing because we are trying to append something to a vector, which calls malloc. But <clears throat> we crashed a whole kernel, which, which is not very good. Um, it looks like it's asserting that um, that interrupts are disabled and process crash. So we are calling process crash, which just assumes that interrupts are disabled, I guess because normally when we crash it's because because we have like a CPU exception, like you're running an invalid instruction or accessing memory that you can't access or something. Oh, and we call turn off interrupts immediately before we call crash normally. So uh, we can just do that. Before we call crash, let's just be a good boy and turn off interrupts. Okay. Then everything should be set up the way that he expects. Aborted. Cool. And then if we looky dooky, you can see here that we are crashing because we have not pledged STDIO. And then the crash address is well we say that it's zero because I don't I don't know what address to put. We could put anything that we want there. But it doesn't matter. What matters is that we are crashing the process. Um because you violated the, your pledge prompts. It's pretty cool. So then, let's see, exec, we already put that thing there, right? Yeah, 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 we require that promise. Let's just not forget to, when we, when we commit to executing a new executable and do exec, I even have a comment about that somewhere. At this point, we have committed to the new executable. Like after that, we should just say m promises is m exec promises, just so that we don't forget about that. Okay. Mm, now I guess it just becomes about like locking more things down and then seeing what happens. So let's just add some more <laughs> things. Um, Maybe we can do the, the inet stuff. So socket inet. The following system calls are allowed to operate in the AF inet and AF inet six domains. So basically, you have to um, pledge inet if you want to create an IPv4 socket or do anything with an IPv4 socket. Um, we can do that. So I guess we'll just mm, we have to look at the um, domain type. So it's inet, oh, then require promise inet. And actually, for local sockets, they have this other thing, Unix here. So if it's something that's in the AF Unix or um, AF local domain. Um, Require promise Unix. Oh, we didn't actually define that, so I guess we should. Unix. Hmm. Okay. And that's. Oh, we're gonna have to do this in every place, so we'll just make a macro for this. Um, require. Um, 
paste on um, socket domain. Um, maybe something like this. That and then call from this for socket domain domain. Um, then I think that we can do this in all the other syscalls. So bind, for example, once we because when we call bind them, we already have a socket instantiated, uh, and we're giving we're given a file descriptor, and then we fetch the file description for that file descriptor. And if it is a socket, then we get the socket. And then here we say socket domain will require a promise for it. And then we have all these other syscalls which follow the same pattern. Um, except, oh wow, this is chunky. Here's the socket. It's the accepting socket description. Oh, no, no, wait, hold on, what am I doing? Uh, it's just called socket. I'm overthinking it. Yeah. Connect, same story here. Send to, same story again. Mm -hmm. Receive from get sock name. I mean, all of these basically, right? Get peer name. We are gonna validate your socket. Okay, did we get all of the socket things? No, here are some more. Get sock opt. Validate the frickin' socket, bro. Okay, set sock opt and I think maybe we're good. Oh, yeah, I have to recompile most of the kernel, I guess, because I'm changing the, um, the list of pledges. Mm. I guess it doesn't have to be in the uh, process.h file, actually. Um, so I bet you that now we're going to start failing because of reasons. At least cat still works. That's cool. Um, Pinggoogle.com. OK. We have not pledged stdio. Shit, yeah, I forgot to put that back. Um, OK, so now we're pledging stdio inet again. Hmm. Okay, why are we crashing now? Has not pledged Unix. Mm-hmm. Right, because we are trying to look up google.com, um, which will try to make a Unix or a local um, socket connection to the lookup server program. And then we'll fail because of that. That's pretty cool. Mm, so I know in Pledge, in OpenBSD, they have a, um, <clears throat> a special promise here, DNS. But DNS works a bit differently in OpenBSD. Um, because uh, there, like, the process itself opens um, Etsy, Resolve, Conf, and stuff like that. And we do everything by making a um, Unix socket connection to the lo um, lookup server. But I like how declarative it is that you can just say, like, I'll be using DNS. Mm. But in our case, we do need to make a Unix connection. But it looks so. Mm. I would like to be able to say this as well. Because if we do it this way, then after we have resolved the address here, get host by name. So after we've done that, then we can remove DNS from our pledges. 
and then we can't do host lookup anymore. So, um, what if we just um, what if we just cheese it and make it an alias for now? When we parse the promises, we'll say like if part equal DNS. Um, DNS is current and alias for Linux due to since uh, DNS queries go yeah lookup sir. Um, ask. Okay, like that. That will be our little special secret that it's an alias. Because then we are still consistent with the uh, name here. And then you could maybe imagine uh, locking down, turning this into its own group and only allowing it to connect to the lookup server over Unix socket and nothing else. But I'm not exactly sure how we would do that. But there's always a way. Uh, but right now I think an alias is fine because this is about documenting the intent of the code also. And it's not his intent to connect to arbitrary Unix sockets, it's, in, it's his intent to do a DNS resolution. Pledge operation not permitted. Oh shit. Ah, I can't do that. I can't pledge DNS here because it was not part of my pledge promise set because you can only ever reduce privileges. Here I was trying to add um, to my pledge. Very good that that works. Okay. Aha. Nice. Okay. Um, I guess we can add some more things. And um, sys, where do we start? Let's just start from the top, do some sys calls. Uh, mmap, let's see which one is the first one we haven't looked at. Purge, yeah, I don't know what to do about that one. Mm. I guess one thing we can, we can say is that uh, if you have, uh, if you have pledged anything, then we can have we can have a concept where if you've made any kind of pledge, then you're just not allowed to make this syscall period because it's not part of any uh, of the pledge promise categories. Um, require we can say like require no promise. Require no promises. Um, does that make sense? Um, yeah, maybe that does make sense. We'll try it. Um, so this will be require promise. Um, no, no, look, require no promises. Any promises? Not good, bro. We're about to crash. Oh, man, typing with these slashes at the end of lines is a little bit frustrating in Cube Creator. Um, okay. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. I almost messed that up. Has um, promised has made a promise. Has made promises. Has made a promise. Yeah, that's good. And we don't allow promises for this syscall, so we will crash. Insert uh, not reached. Okay. And 
what did I mess up? I forgot something. Mm. Oh, like that. And now we can just scroll and scroll until we find something that looks like a syscall that we haven't required something for. Fork, fine. Exit. Exit is like, I guess that's the one syscall that you should always be allowed to do, because if you want to exit, that's fine by me. So who's next? Sig return. Mm, yeah, I don't want to touch that one. That's just an implementation detail for how we do, um, how we handle returning from signals, signal handlers. Get directory entries. Okay, I would assume that goes in STDIO somewhere. But what do they call it? Get dent, maybe? Is that it? Get directory entries. Yeah, yeah, that's the same. Require promise uh, STDIO. LSEEK. What's LSEEK? Um, that's STDIO as well. All right. And what's TTY name? Well, they don't have TTY name as a syscall. Maybe they do it differently. But there's a TTY group. And what is that? In addition to allowing read-write operations on dev TTY, this opens up a variety of IO cuddles. Um, I think it's kind of logical that we would put that in the TTY group. Likewise with PTS name for pseudo terminals. And then the write syscalls, um, write v is stdio as well. And syswrite, sysread, definitely stdio. Close, I would assume it's stdio. Close, yep. Utime, setting the time stamp of a file. Fatter. I mean, that's U time S, but um, the following system calls are allowed to make explicit changes to fields and struct stats relating to a file. All right, so let's do fatter for that one. That's kind of interesting. So that's like file attributes. Um, I'm going to need some new promises here. Uh, fatter, and what was the other one? TTY. Access. Oh, what's access? Our path. Yeah, I guess it's our path. You can add. you can like do it read only because this is read only file system path lookups. This is write file system stuff. So access is strictly read only. It's just checking if you have access to open a file or not. So, require promise our path. Okay, and then for control is in the STDIO group. Fstat, what's that? Fstat is also STDIO and in our path. Oh, so it's in many of them. But it's an STDIO, so let's just put it there. I don't really have um. We should probably eventually allow, like, if you're in any of these, if you've made any of these pledge promises, then we will um, allow it. Mm. Hmm. Just thinking, how should we do that? Because it could also just be like our path, w path. Well, we'll get to that. Lstat. That's our path material, apparently. I'm just going to keep adding things here. It's regular stat, also our path. Read link. Uh, our path as well. Makes sense. You're just reading file system metadata. 
Change directory. Ooh, what is that? That's our path. To change directory is our path because then you're being you're passing it a path and a path length. Whereas fchdir, you're not doing a path lookup. You're only changing it into a file script that they already have, which they apparently put into stdio instead. That's kind of curious, but I wonder what the rationale is. But I'm just going to follow what they chose. Get cwd, our path. Okay, I um, realize that maybe this is a bit boring to go through all of these, but I feel like we should still do it. Open at, open at, oh, they only have open at. They don't have open and open at. That's interesting. I bet we maybe we could consolidate um, and only have a single one of those syscalls as well. Because right now we have open and open ats, but I think maybe you can implement open as a wrapper around open at. Uh, I don't see why you couldn't. Um, but for now, let's just pledge our path. Or actually, open is more complicated. Because if it's right, if you want to write, then you need w path. And if you want to create a new file, then you need c path for create. So we have to look at the options. Um, so if it's read write or uh, write only, then require promise wpath, uh, which we don't have. And otherwise, we'll require our path. And if you want to create, Will require a C path. Okay, let's just add some more here. Wait, why doesn't that react? Oh. Mm, like that. Yeah, and then actually we have to do exactly the same in open at. So we should probably go and consolidate these syscalls. Um, cool. Pipe stdio. Kill PG. It's a kill process group. What do they do with that? Process relationship operations. Okay, cool. Put that into proc. Set UID, we already updated. Sys alarm. Well, that seems pretty harmless. It's not here. The alarm sys call, it's just uh, it's just a way to say, hey, send me a alarm signal in this many seconds. That seems really harmless. We can put it in this DDIO. U name. Do they have anything for that? No. Probably they implement it differently. But we can let you look up the uname as part of stdio. If you want to find out that you're running on Serenity, that's okay. Kill was proc, yep. You sleep. It's probably part of nano sleep here, which is part of stdio. Same with sleep. Get time of day is stdio as well. Uh, we're gonna get to the end of it, I promise. <laughs> get UID, what's that? stdio, okay. So all of these type of things are stdio. Get good. get ewid, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess this is just stuff that programs often do. Um, standard console programs. I feel like I've said this like 20 times now, but you mask. Oh. Uh, wait pid. Oh, interesting. Wait is stdio as well. I guess I kind of would have expected that to be more of a proc thing, but I guess it's not. It's fine. And. Get Sid, 
as to the IO, sets it, sets it as proc, finally something different. Get pgid. Alright, how many more syscalls do we have in this? Get pgirp. Set pgid. It's proc. We have to be running out of these eventually. IO cuddle. Oh, IO cuddle is tricky. Um, that one is, we're gonna have to go into each of the different IO cuddles and look at it because I know that they have like this audio group that allows you to IO cuddle on audio device and then they have video that lets you IO cuddle on a video device. Um, and then of course TTY is supposed to let you IO cuddle on a TTY. Mm. So we'll have to investigate that one. D table size, what is that even? D table count. That's how many file descriptors you can have open? How many you currently have open? Wait, get d table size? Why do we even have this? this is called? Who's using that? We're exposing it. Um, this seems to be a Linux thing that I have implemented and not used for some reason. Maximum number of file descriptors to have open. Okay. I guess we can uh, put that squarely in the STDIO bucket. All right, we got dup. Let's put that in STDIO. Same with dub2. Sig proc mask. More STDIO. Everything in STDIO. Sig pending. Sig. Oh, we'll put them here. Get groups. Okay, come on. Be something else. No, it's just to the IO as well. MacDeer. All right, fine. This has to be something cool. C path. Create path, I guess. Real path. I don't think that's not a syscall on other systems, but we have it. So it uh, looks up, takes a, um, a path, and then turns it into like a canonical path string. Resolving some links and stuff. That's our path material, I think. Times. It's just asking for how much time have we spent in the user space, how much in the kernel, and how much has our dead children spent? Let's say STDIO. It's like a typical shell thing. Like if you use time in bash or something like that, it would use times, I think, to figure out how long something took. I think. Um, well, I'm not exactly sure. How that works. But anyway, select that has to be stdio, right? And surely the same for poll, which comes right after here. Yeah. Link. I would assume that's C path for create path. Yes. Unlink. That's also C path. You're not necessarily creating something, but you are um, removing a file. Simlink, also CPAP. RMD, -er, I bet that's CPAP. Has to be CPAP. Chmod. That's in a whole bunch of them, but I feel like that's um, fatter, right? File attributes. Let's just put them in there for now. Same with for chmod. And for chone. Write path. Temp path. Fatter. And chone. There's a separate chone group. Maybe we should put him by himself for now. Because we can't really go wrong with being overly restrictive here, because then we just have to open things up later. It's better to be overly restrictive and open things up later. Chown. And blah, 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 
apply. Any more syscalls? Socket. We already did these. Socket, socket, socket. Sockets. Schedule set param. So this is for scheduling priorities. I think we'll put that into um, proc. Same with scheduler get param. The more socket stuff. And then we have our shared buffer stuff. Mm. We should have our own category for those. We'll make our own category for shared buffers. I keep bouncing between calling them pledges, promises, and categories, and groups. Um, I don't know which one I like the most. Shared buffers are um, Serenity specific mechanism for sharing memory between processes. Um, we could do it in some more standard Unixy way, but it's very convenient at the moment. Okay, I feel like I just want to try this out right now. So we have been doing so many of these. Let's see, how many do we have left? Where are we in the file? Um, quite a bit left to go. What if we go from the bottom? <laughs> pledge. Well, we'll let you pledge. You can always pledge to remove more stuff. We shouldn't prevent you from that. To root. We'll say, hmm, cheroot. When should you be allowed to cheroot? I'm not sure. I'll leave that one alone. Actually, I'm not sure about those require no promises things. Maybe there should be a cheroot. Cheroot. Why isn't there a cheroot promise? I want to have a cheroot promise, because then I can take it away. After I've cherooted, I can just promise to not do it again. That seems extremely useful, so I'm just going to add that. Um, cheroot. Whatever. I can add things if I want. I just added shared buffer and cheroot. And I guess we can do that also. Because if you're not super user, there's no true root for you regardless. Set process boot boost. It's proc material. Thread boost also proc. Futex. Mm, Futex we can probably just leave alone. Or it's like STDIO stuff. Or I don't know about Futex. Maybe we should have a separate thread category, maybe, maybe. I'm less sure. Profiling. Mm. Let's can say require no promises. Don't let you we don't let you start profiling if you've made promises. Um, same with module loading, maybe. And beeping. Uh, <laughs> I guess we can let you beep if you really want to. Sync. Where did they put that? F sync stdio. Good enough for me. Mm, nano sleep. Okay, I realized that I just I said I wanted to try stuff, and then I'm just going from the bottom. Get time, right? STDIO again, I'm sure. Yeah. Set key map. Mm -hmm. Well, we can disallow it if you promise to not do stuff. Get random. Well, we don't want to stop someone from getting random bytes, so we can let you do that. Get process name, though. That seems like something anyone might want to do, just get his own process name. In fact, I think actually our debug logging code will do this, so we'll just crash if we don't allow it. Mm, or if you put it into proc, then it will start failing because all of the debug logging code uses get process name. Yeah, it's right here in the in this thing that sets up a debug log stream. 
Oh, set process icon. That's a shared buffer thing. Oh my god, I'm so um, um, tired of putting these in, and I bet you're tired of watching it. <laughs> McNod. D path. Ooh, that's a new one. To create special files. Okay, so like device path. That's a cool one to disallow. Don't let you create a new device. And then we have U mount and mount. Those are very rare syscalls. We can say maybe require no promises. We don't let you do these if you have made promises. Same with reboot. If you promise something, you can't reboot or halt. Systrace. Um, let's put that one in proc. Watch file. Oh, dude, my brain is starting to get really mushy from all this. Watch file. So it's like getting notifications if a directory or file changes metadata. So we'll put in our path, I think. Like read file system access. F truncate. STDIO. Okay. Rename. C path. Donate. So this is donating the remainder of your scheduling time slice to another thread. Well, you don't have to touch that one. Same with get thread ID. Um, although we can put it in STDIO. Because why not? Um, or, uh, hmm, yeah, okay. They can be part of the regular STDIO set, actually. Get thread name. Who uses that? Libp thread. Hmm. I don't know yet about all the thread related stuff. Maybe we should have a thread category or something. But I feel like now we've actually come up from the bottom. Yeah, great thread. Okay. So threads are the only thing I don't really know what to do with. Maybe we should have a thread promise. I guess it's pretty easy to make it. And then we can figure out later if it's stupid. So we'll just have thread. Detach thread. So if you try to create a thread and you haven't pledged thread, then we will crash you. Although get tid, that's used by um, like malloc locks and stuff like that. So I think we'll just leave that one in stdio because like basically every program is going to use it. Same with donate. Okay. I realize I forgot to add thread, but I think that we are done adding these. Holy moly. Oh, I forgot dpath. Shit. Uh, okay. That was a whole frick load. Um, what's that red there? Oh. So now that we have done all of that, all of that, oof. Thank you for still being here. Uh, get CWD. Oh. Now that we've done all of that, let's go ahead and try to use this for something. Well, let's be get CWD, our path. Let's try to apply this <clears throat> to some more programs. Mm, I guess we can do ID. So what does the ID program need? Uh, I'm trying to pledge. We need STDIO. And we need to open um, files. So our path. But nothing other than that. Uh, 
does it not realize that this exists? Because, wait. Oh, wait, hold on. I have to pass the second string. The exec promises. Okay, so I wonder if we are going to be very crashy now or something. Ping, google.com. This still works. No surprise crashes. ID works. Cat, Etsy, past MD. Totally works. That's really nice. Oh, look at that. The um, system menu opens if I just press the Windows key now. That's pretty cool. So let's see if we can pledge the shell. That seems like an interesting challenge. Challenge. <laughs> so what would we do to pledge the shell? Um, I guess STDIO. No, not common. And we need to read files, and we need to um, we need to be able to fork and exec. Um, I guess that's it. And then in exec programs, we don't want to influence how their pledges look, so we'll just leave them alone. Okay. I feel like we're gonna need more things here. Um, okay, this is the shell. How did that work? Oh wait, I didn't rebuild it, because it's not part of the user land, it's in a separate directory. Because surely there must be something that falls apart. Oh, wow, very, very busy. Okay. Shell has not pledged TTY. Because we're calling TTY name. Okay. TTY. This is pretty cool. Like, how neat is that? that and now it works. So now we have to say what we want to use in programs, or we will crash. This is going, I mean, this this is just such a nice um, security and correctness mechanism, I think. Because once a program is set up this way, even if someone uh, manages to compromise the program by tricking it somehow, um, now they've been like limited in what they can do with this program. Even if you take control of shell, you can't open a, an internet socket, for example. So that's pretty neat. Hmm, what else? Let's see what kind of programs we have, actually. <laughs> Let's just go to slash bin and take a look. Um, which one do we want to mess with? I guess we can do... Hmm, maybe host? It doesn't name look up. So host would need stdio and DNS. Why does it say that this does not exist? Oh, because I'm not including UniSTD? Okay, that's simple. Very cool. Okay, let's do a harder program, like something like the browser. Because what the heck does he need, right? Definitely STDIO. And we'll need um, DNS. And I mean, what we're actually doing is we're talking over 
we're using Unix sockets, just not for, not just for DNS, but also for the HTTP protocols. We're connecting to protocol server, which does that on our behalf. So I guess we can we can say that DNS Unix, even though they're the same, just for um, the expressiveness of it all. Um, let's just approach it this way. Let's pledge a minimum set, and then we'll see uh, what else we need by um, testing it and seeing what fails. Browser crashed. Has not pledged CPath because we want to unlink something. Oh, I guess every GUI program, they want to um, create an RPC socket and slash temp. Um, and then once they've done that, oh, it's kind of annoying that they do that, actually. But mm, it's hard to avoid. But we'll have to pledge CPath. And then maybe we can get rid of it after after we construct the G application, because it will instantiate an event loop, which will open up an RPC socket. But once we've done that, maybe we can remove CPath. Let's try it. That would be really cool. And fetch a mod. OK. Same thing here. Um, trying to listen to that RPC socket. I'm trying to set the um, the uh, file system permissions on the RPC socket, which needs fatter. But I think we can drop it after we've instantiated J application. Okay. So what now? Has not played shared buffer. Okay. So we definitely use those extensively here. Oh shit, and we can't unpledge it. So, ah, uh, let's make sure that we keep it. It's really nice if we drop the ability to um, alter the file system and change file attributes. Has not pledged our path. Okay, so to load fonts, we need our path. That makes sense. We're probably going to need our path going forward as well for various things like loading um, stuff from disk. Um, so we'll keep our path. But we don't need to write to disk, only read. Only read only stuff. And we are up. Can we browse? Yes, we can. Oops. Oh, that's annoying. If I do um, win key down and then resize and then let go of the win key, it pops up the system menu. I should fix that. Okay, so now we're on the internet, browsing my cool GitHub sponsors uh, promo page, and it totally works. And that that thing is so annoying, <laughs> um, but this is so cool. So now the browser app here is really really limited in what he can do. We can only do these things. And um, in fact, he can't actually connect to the internet himself. He has to go through the Unix socket that connects to the protocol server, which we should be able to see here. Protocol server, look at this guy. He's doing all the internet stuff on our behalf. Maybe we should add the set of pledge promises to system monitor. But this is getting pretty big, so let's commit. Um, Git commit, we'll add these right here, okay. Kernel, um, add pledge, this is call. This patch adds implement uh, basic support for OpenBSD style pledge. Um, this um, pledge allows you to 
Plus programs to incrementally reduce their um, set of allowed this calls, which um, incrementally reduce their set of allowed sys calls, um, which are divided into cat and um, uh, divided into categories that each make up a subset of POSIX functionality. Um, yeah. Then, um, this is by no means complete and we'll need to add more um, checks in various places um, to ensure that promises are being kept. Um, if a program, if a process violates one of uh, its alleged promises by uh, attempting to call this call that it said it that it previously said it would call the process is immediately uh, terminated by an uncatchable sig abert. But it is cool. But it is pretty cool. All right, then let's add some utilities. So we'll start with ping. Ping. Um, use pledge. Do, 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 do. What do you want to say about this? To reduce, I mean, we don't have to say like use pledge to reduce the amount of syscalls available because that's, that's what it does. Uh, apply pledge pattern, apply pledge, use pledge. Yeah. Um, we'll just say these for all of them. Show use pledge. Um, may have forgotten something here. We'll see if um, some additional needed uh, promises need to be made. We'll discover. I mean, that's really true of all of these things, right? But um, Forgot about cat. Browser. Use pledge. Okay. This is the first complex app to use pledge, and it was extremely easy to get it working. main trickiness uh, comes from the RPC sockets getting um, that get set up inside G, um, the G application constructor. Um, since it wants to unlink the uh, any old RPC socket, same file name and G uh, change the file mode of the near 
socket. It needs both um, CPAP and fatter. Once G application, once the G application has been constructed, uh, it seems we can safely uh, drop those promises. Pretty cool. Mm. Okay, what's something else that we could pledge? Um, oh well, let's let's add them to the system monitor. Actually, like I was saying, so we'll need to expose this in the proc file system as a file. So we'll go to procfs, say proc pid um, pledge. Maybe we'll just do that, and then it can just be a file that has all of the different pledges. And it does not have to be very fancy. Just give me something that outputs JSON. I guess this will no. PVM. Where are you, PVM? I need to. I want to copy paste something that uses JSON. Uh, bid pledge. Okay, and then U32 promises is process and promises. Can we get it? No, we have to ask more nicely. Um, oh, we actually have these. We, oh yeah, we can just use that API. Uh, so, for let's make a string builder. Actually, maybe we don't put them in pid pledge, but we put this in proc all instead so that we can pick it up in the system monitor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me backtrack everything I was doing here. Undo. Undo. Okay. Um, all. Let's just add it here. Proc all is amazing. That's where all the information about all the processes and threads is. Um, object add pledge. Um, string it. Pledge string. Let's see. Pledge builder to string. Okay. Mm. Okay, and then four. Uh, oh no, hold on. We need that stupid macro again. Enumerate pledge promise. If process has promised pledge colon colon promise, pledge builder append um, promise and a space. see what this looks like before we actually put it into um, system monitor. 
Fuck. So, ah, damn it. Can we see someone who's made some pledges? Everyone's pledge is empty. Who actually made some? This thing is not sorted. It's so hard to find stuff. Oh, maybe I can use Gron, actually. Um, F grab pledge. See everyone's pledges. Ooh, look at that. How cool is Gron, by the way? It's this thing that, um, what's his name? Tom Nom Nom came up with. It takes JSON and it turns it into these assignment statements, and it's extremely grappable, which is so cool. So, yeah, we can see here these processes have pledged to this. That's really, really nifty. Okay, so let's display that in the system monitor. Uh, in the process, uh, we have to put it in the process statistics. Because we have this convenience class that parses out uh, everything from proc all. So we can just say, well, what am I even looking for? I'll just put it anywhere. String pledge. And wherever we populate this guy, we'll just do the same. Read from the JSON pledge. Okay. And then this is probably used somewhere more, isn't it? Isn't somebody using this? Process model. This is the model that we use in the um, system monitor. We can put the pledge on the very end because it's going to be long. So pledge, and we'll put it. We'll put it here. Pledge, and then we have to add it to all these things. Just. Column pledge. Oh. Text alignment here is the important part, I think. Don't want to mess that up. And for the pledge column, we want to sort by pledge, whatever. And the display is going to be the pledge string. And just make sure we copy it over. Uh, okay, I think we are good. I mean, I see if that just worked. And look at that. So it's actually hard to see what's what because we <laughs> have to scroll the way all over here to see the shell has pledged that. Now I wish we could drag these. We can't. Not implemented. Although we could, I guess we could like turn everything off. Come over here, pledge. I'll remove everyone else. Don't worry, I'll make space for you, even if it takes a while. Just another moment. Oh, man. Also, why is it disappearing? Um, ooh, starting to have space for pledge. Look at that. Everything else disappearing. Ah. Oh. That's really neat. Mm, I kind of. Okay, while we're working on this, let's just um, put him in a special boy place right here An endless pledge terminal so it's going to be the same as browser basically just 
VML. Um, and we need TTY. And we're going to need our path. And then while we're starting up G application, we're going to need, uh, what was it? C path and fatter. Okay, and then after we have a G application, we can get rid of C path and fatter. Actually, we're going to need W path because we want to save history. So we need C path and W path, but not fatter for saving history. But everything else I think we can skip. So no internet, um, no local sockets, no set UID, no funny business. Um, Okay, that was not enough to get. Terminal has not pledged Unix. Right, I need Unix for the local socket. This is really interesting. I don't know if it's interesting to other people. I hope it is. I find this really fascinating. What we can do with this. Terminal has not pledged share buffer, right. Every GUI app needs to put shared buffer. Actually, every GUI app needs to pledge Unix. Otherwise, it's not going to be able to talk to the um, Windows server. Maybe we should even have like uh, its own category for that, like. Um, a GUI category that implies Unix and shared buffer. We need proc because we want to fork in terminal. That makes sense. So we need proc. Wait, let's make sure that we put these in order. Ah, I'm losing track here. Um, Unix, no, fatter is the only one that I want to take away, I guess. Wait a minute. C path and W path, why do I need those? I don't need those, do I? When I was saying history, I was thinking about the shell, which makes me think that now probably we broke the shell history saving. But we'll find out. So we have a terminal. What happens if we exit? We actually get a crash when we try to save history. Look at that, because shell has not pledged W path. This is super neat. Um, super duper duper neat. Mm -mm 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 -mm. In shell main, we are going to need, what is shell main? Shell main is going to need to pledge wpath and cpath for creating a new file. It might be that these are supposed to like, I don't know, you're supposed to only need one of them or something, but I kind of like spelling it out like this. Terminal. Mm. When we save the config file in terminal, we need to write files. I don't think we need fatter then. So like if we change fonts, it doesn't crash. It's really good. Change the opacity, it doesn't crash. Ah. Um, then if we exit, do we get a crash? No, we don't. Okay, so we'll add that shell fix. We'll just, um, oh shit, I have on stage changes. Um, fine, shell. 
Um, we need to fix uh, pledge violation um, due to um, some pledge um, to make a history saving work. Okay. And then we were just adding these to proc, proc fs expose process pledge promises and proc all. And at terminal, terminal, use pledge. So for GUI apps, we need um, shared buffer and Unix. Otherwise, we can't GUI. So that's OK. Hmm. Do we, after, after we've spawned a shell and a terminal, I was thinking, do we need to fork anymore? But currently, the way that like you have this option to open a new window, and what that does is actually it forks and uh, opens a new terminal process. And I think we're going to keep it that way. So we'll keep um, the proc pledge promise for now. Um, okay, what's something else that we could pledge? Pledgeify. Hmm. How about the Hack Studio program? Oh shit, why are you crashing so much, bro? Um, wait, what? Come again? It's crashing because it's trying to run make and make doesn't work. Okay. And then the process state which it dies. Um, that's really strange. Dev tools. Wonder if that was a legit crash. That's really strange. It may have just been a bad rebuild. We don't have a functioning make here, but um, we could try to pledge Hack Studio. So it'll be sort of the same as the terminal program. Except we can't, we don't really want to drop any of these things because I think we need to keep um, we want to save files and stuff like that but we don't want to connect to the internet and we don't want to set UID and we don't want to true root so there are benefits to doing this I keep telling myself I guess what we should look at is like stuff that's visible on startup so the taskbar main um, we don't need a TTY. Actually, we don't need any files here. Maybe we only need this. Taskbar is a cool one, if we can make that work. Oh, shit, like we need fatter for G application. I forgot about that. We can drop pattern. Okay. Taskbar seems to be crashing pretty aggressively. Has not pledged CPath. We need CPath. Right. Taskbar needs our path for loading the fonts. 
Hmm. I wonder if we can avoid. Um, if we can like make it load all the fonts it needs up front or something, but then it would it wouldn't really work that well, I think, because then if the system theme changes, then we need to open fonts again. But maybe that could work differently. I'm not sure. Or we could combine this with some kind of unveil thing, but that's a whole other exercise. Um, okay, really cool. And let's see all those pledges we got going here. So these are, we now have a bunch of programs with active pledges. Pretty cool. Can we, let's just do the running things. So we have these menu applets, we have CPU graph, audio, and clock. So let's do the same for those guys. What do we need for that one? CPU graph doesn't need to interact with other processes. He does need to open proc all, which is what he does. After creating the G application, we don't need CPath and fatter. We do need the Unix socket though to keep streaming stuff to the um, Windows server. Can we get a CPU graph? Yes, we can. Look at that. Look at his tiny little set of things that he can do. How neat is that? He's still drawing the CPU graph. He can barely do anything. Hmm. Love it. Okay, let's do a few more. <laughs> let's do the other menu applets. I think all the menu applets can be like this, actually. Um, what's it called? Audio main. Same concept. Actually, we don't even need our path for him. He doesn't need to read files afterwards. Um, And for the um, clock, okay. did that work actually? No, it's very crashy. Shit. Oh, we need our path because of the font thing again. Jeez. He doesn't even use fonts. Okay, that our path thing. We're gonna have to come back to our path, I think, because that's one. That one is irritating. Um, clock. system monitor also. So here, I just want to copy what we were doing here. So this is sort of the basic GUI app setup. You start with these, then you create your application, then you drop, you drop CPath and fatter. We can keep going like this forever. I'm, I'm gonna stop now. I think we're just gonna commit these, and then we'll be happy for the day. So we'll start with the. Actually, let's move it in the sys monitor. Process model. Um, we'll move him to here. How does that look? If we put him after purgeable non-volatile, because like 
the list of columns in System Monitor is sort of ordered by how much of a favorite feature it is for me at the moment. So that's, yeah, we can get it if we maximize this way. That's pretty good. I like it. This is not my favorite feature. Um, okay, all right. I'm okay with that. So let's see, git add. And system process model libcore system monitor plus libcore show process pledges uh, promises in system monitor ah didn't fit. Task bar use pledge Hack Studio use pledge. Did that even work? I feel like I even forgot to check. Yeah, I guess it does work. Yeah. Seems to be basically functioning despite the pledge, although we crash on exit. Ah, that's some other bug. I'm not going to debug that now. Um, what else do we have? All the menu applets, right? Menu applets is pledge. Okay. This is very, very cool. I'm super happy with this progress. So I think we're coming to the end of the video here. So what have we achieved today? We'll start system monitor. Well, we have implemented basic a basic pledge syscall. So processes in the system can now tell the kernel what they intend to do. And if they do anything other than what they said they would, then they will crash. This, I think this will be an excellent mechanism going forward for um, just enforcing correctness and ensuring that everybody does what they're supposed to. And of course, I need to go and add it to more programs, but we're off to a good start here. So I definitely encourage you to read more about OpenBSC Pledge because this is just um, like a first cut of an implementation, right? Taking the basic concept and putting it into Serenity OS.